Mission accomplished, I didn't fall getting up on the stage. So my name is Quinn Oler, and I'm a member of the newly formed Mental Rescue Society. We're a group of Edmontonians who got together to raise funds and awareness about mental, for mental health programs here in our city. We also want to change the conversation about mental health. It's no surprise that there's a stigma around mental illness. Things are starting to change, but they need to change quicker. Look to your left, look to your right, look behind you. One of you, if statistics are correct, will be diagnosed with a mental illness some point in your life. That works out to 4.5 million Canadians. So I googled mental health, this is the image that comes up. This is what mental illness is supposed to look like, but it doesn't. People who suffer from mental illness are some of the best actors and actresses I know, and when they finally do tell their story, sometimes they face things like, well, life really isn't that bad. We need to change that. So we created this organization. I say we, it actually started with two Edmonton firefighters. They had both had members of their family who were touched by mental illness, and they also saw one of their own firefighters touched by PTSD who ended up taking his own life. So they decided they were gonna run 100 miles in the Sinister Seven race in the Crow's Nest Pass. They raised an insane amount of money for it, for mental health programs. But when they asked where that money went, they weren't able to get a straight answer. They wanted their friends and family who'd been able to donate and been able to get behind their cause to know where it's going. So Mental Rescue was born. They got together a group of us who all have the same passion and made sure that we were able to change the conversation, have a bigger conversation about it, a bigger discussion, and a better understanding of what mental illness is. They started to build their community. So this is one of our co-founders. I actually told him that I switched out the picture, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I asked all of our board members to send, us, send me a picture of what it means, how they cope, how they deal with their own mental illness, and this is what Paul sent me. It's, he also sent me a picture of Mickey. I know you're in the crowd. He also sent me a picture of you, but... <laughs> so it, the way he deals with it is by playing with his son. This is our other co-founder. This is Rob, and his father battled mental illness for most of his life. Rob actually lost his dad while he was on his honeymoon. He says that mental rescue is his way of keeping his father with him every day. This is Allie. She suffered a concussion when she was in her 20s, and she was diagnosed with depression and anxiety after, which is a common symptom after you have a concussion. She had to actually drop out of some of her courses in university. She had to work on her course load after it. But what she was able to do is she was able to rely on her friends and family to get through it. She was also able to find fitness, and that's how she got involved with Mental Rescue. When I asked her to do this, Ali took a few minutes and said, I don't know how, how, how much I want to share of my own story. But she came through and did it. So remember this guy? We talked about him a little bit. My own story of mental illness, of depression and anxiety, I've never shared publicly. But I got a blog, I wrote a blog post one day and someone sent me a message and said, it's nice to know that someone who seems to have it all together sometimes doesn't. This is what my mental illness looked like. It was like I was running a marathon every single day. I was going through the hardest workout that I've ever done. I wanted to scream, I wanted to cry, but I had to hold it together because I had to be on a newscast every single night. I contacted one of my friends when I decided I'd had enough. And he's here in the audience this evening. And he helped save my life because he took me to a gym he made me run, and he broke me. I run just about every day to be able to deal with what I've been handed. So the reason I got involved, this is the Sinister Seven group. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a reporter with Global Edmonton, so I made them run behind our vehicle while I drove. <laughs> I drove a little fast. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> I know you're still mad at me about that. Uh, I did the news story with him, and then a couple of months ago, I got in contact with Paul again. And he mentioned that he was creating this society, and he told me all about it, and he was so excited 
so excited. I've never seen someone so excited about being able to do something and to make a real change. And I had no other option but to get on board. This is us at the Five for the Ford event, and we're actually wearing the socks. We've been taking part in some pretty major events. This is our biggest event, our first event that we held, and it was a 24-hour stair climb at the TELUS building. It was called the Great Stair Climb. Paul climbed stairs for 24 hours with another member of the Edmonton Fire Department for 24 hours under the impression that if you think that climbing stairs for 24 hours is hard, try doing it with a mental illness. And something really interesting happened that day. Yes, we got a ton of media attention. We had 30,000 people on Facebook watch our video on this, just on the Global Edmonton Facebook page. But something even more interesting happened. When we were down there, I know a couple of the other members who were down there as well with me, people came up to us and said, thank you. Thank you for making it okay for me to talk about this. It's something I never, ever expected. But we also got something else. When we were talking about it, someone actually, a couple weeks later, we found out that she actually went in to the office at Momentum, which is a 24-hour crisis counseling line. They went in because of our event, and I think that's mission accomplished. One of the things that we really want to talk about is activities. Our motto is one step at a time, but it, it doesn't have to be about one step. It can be anything that you are really passionate about, whether it's one pen stroke, whether it's one painting, whether it's one poem. But we want people to be comfortable. We want people to be able to talk about this and not to be looked down upon. Instead, we want people to reach out and pull people out of those dark places and talk about it. Thank you.